This is going to be Romans chapter 2 verses 1 through 16 and it is about self-righteous judgmental people who condemn themselves by judging others and basing their own righteousness off other people. When they get to the great white throne judgment they're going to be in for a real surprise. Remember that born again Christians will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ and the lost from all ages will be judged at the great white throne judgment along with the Old Testament saints and tribulation and millennial saints. But let's get right into the chapter. Romans 2 1 says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. So the first thing we see is he is inexcusable. A lost, self-righteous, judgmental person at the great, great white throne will be inexcusable. He will be inexcusable because when he looks at someone and judges them, he is confessing that he himself knows right from wrong. He is admitting he knows better than to go against what the Bible says. And notice the therefore. The word therefore at the beginning of Romans 2 1. This shows it is a continuation of that long list of sins in Romans 1 29 through 32. And Romans 1 32 says, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them, in them that do them. This person knows the judgment of God. He knows that a man who commits sin is worthy of death, and that's why he is inexcusable. He is inexcusable because when he judges someone, he is doing the same things himself. Many may judge and say a man is, isn't right because he is drinking alcohol or smoking, but what about your gossiping, complaining, lying, laziness, and pride? And many will try to base their own righteousness off of comparing themselves to others that are around them. They look at others and say things like, I don't shack up with people, I don't smoke pot or have tattoos, so I'm okay and I'm righteous and I can get to heaven because look at my good works and how good I am. They're trying to get to heaven by their own righteousness. They think if they don't do certain things, that they will be able to stand at the judgment and not be condemned. But they don't realize it isn't works that they get to heaven. You don't get to heaven by your works. And when they think they make, make it to heaven by their own works, they condemn themselves. While these lost men have no right to judge anyone else, Christians, on the other hand, should judge all things. 1 Corinthians 2.15 says, But he that is spiritual judges, judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. And it must be righteous judgment. John 7.24 says, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. If you tell a man he is going to hell for rejecting Jesus Christ, then that is righteous judgment because the one who told you that he was going to hell was righteous. God told you in his book, that Christ rejectors go to hell when they die. A lost man thinks you are judging him when you tell him that he is going to hell, but he turns around and judges you unrighteously when he says things like, I'm just as good as you are. Why am I going to hell? Or I know a Christian who commits such and such sin, and I would never do that, so I'm just as good as he is. Why would he go to heaven and I would go to hell? They're basing their righteousness off judging someone else. And that leads us to our next point. These people won't just be inexcusable. They will be condemned at the great white throne. And John 3.18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If you are going to try to get righteousness by judging others as unrighteous, then you're condemned already. You only get imputed righteousness from Jesus Christ. 
John 3, 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. If you're not saved, then you are not only condemned, but the wrath of God is abiding on you. Jesus Christ is your friend in the sense that he died for you and is giving you a way out, but you are at enmity with God. And the only way to be reconciled is through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you stay under the wrath of God, then you will die in your sins and face him under his wrath at the great white throne judgment. But moving on to Romans 2 and verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. A man who tries to justify himself righteous by judging others is not judging according to truth. The Pharisees trusted in themselves. And you read in Luke 18, 9, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. You can spot a true Pharisee when you see someone judging someone else when they have a huge sin in their life themselves. Notice how the Pharisees judged Jesus Christ in Luke 16, 14. It says, And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. So they were judging him even though they were covetous. So we see at the great white throne, you will be contrary to the truth. Jesus Christ won't be your advocate. He will be your enemy. So you will be against the truth. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You rejected the light, Jesus Christ, who is said to be the truth. In John 14, 6, you will be judged at the great white throne judgment. And the people you compared yourself to down here will possibly be in the audience watching you as you're judged. You will be compared to a perfect man who lived a sinless life, and that's Jesus Christ. And you will fall short because he is the only righteous man who ever lived. He is God in the flesh. And look at Romans 2.8 along with Romans 2.2. It says, But unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. You didn't obey the truth. If you wind up at the judgment, you didn't have obedience to faith. You're obedient when you place your faith in God's Son. Most people who sit around judging others think that they don't have to repent because they have their own self-righteousness. So they... Like the verse said, they obey unrighteousness. All of your righteousness is unrighteousness. Like it says in Romans, there is none righteous, no, not one. And not only this, they are contentious. They go against the truth and will argue that they are righteous without God, without believing on Jesus Christ. They have an unrepentant heart. In Romans 2, 3 says, and thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Not only will you be inexcusable, condemned, and contrary to the truth, but you will find out at the great white throne that you haven't escaped the judgment of God. They think they have escaped by doing righteous works before men. But if you look at their secret life, they're doing the same things that everyone else is doing. Just like the Pharisees were always trying to look righteous before men. Romans 2, 3, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. At the great white throne judgment, if you would rather be in the audience instead of the one being judged, then you need to realize your guilt of sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, 
but after this, the judgment. And you're not excluded from this verse. You are going to die one day. And if you're saved, you'll be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And if you're lost, you, you'll be judged at the great right throne. A Christian knew that he wouldn't escape the judgment of God. So he ran to the fire escape, which is Jesus Christ. So Romans 2, 3 is talking about escaping the judgment of God. Jesus Christ also talks about ex escaping the damnation of hell. In Matthew 23, 33, it says, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? The Lord Jesus Christ is the only escape. You should come to him now so you don't have to be judged by him later for your wicked works. And in the verse Romans 2, 3, where it says, O man, the old man in the verse is referring to a lost person because in the sense of the wrath of God, hell, the time of Jacob's trouble, the great white throne, a saved person has already escaped the judgment of God in that sense. Not only do these people think they can escape the judgment of God, they are also treasuring up wrath. Romans 2, 4, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Look at these verses about the day of wrath. In John, uh, Job 21.30, That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Proverbs 11.4, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. And then Zephaniah 1.15, That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness, and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. The wrath of God is a scary thing. If you don't think God would let something bad happen to you, then look at everyone else. If you don't have any fear of God, then look at what is going on in the world. People are suffering, people being raped and tortured, and God is allowing all of it to happen. What makes you think he won't let it happen to you? If you are rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ, then every time you reject Jesus Christ and continue in your own self-righteousness, you are doing nothing but treasuring up wrath against yourself. Revelation 14.10 says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So this shows God has a cup. And every time you sin and reject Jesus Christ, it gets a little more full. And one day God will make you drink the wine of the wrath of God. The Bible talks about this cup that's, that gets full when people or a nation continues to sin. In Genesis 15:16. But in the fourth generation they shall come up hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Maybe your cup is not yet full, but it might be almost full. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, so the wrath of God is, abide, is not abiding on you anymore. If you reject Jesus Christ, you are consistently making hell worse and worse for yourself when you get there. The same way a Christian sets up treasures for himself in heaven, you're you are treasuring up more torment in hell. If you reject Jesus Christ and you go through the time of Jacob's trouble, you will see the wrath of God like you have never seen it. I'd hate to be a lost man at the second advent. Remember how Zephaniah 1.15 described the day of wrath. It is a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Romans 2, 5, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, you are rejecting Jesus Christ because of your hard and impenitent heart. Your heart is hard 
and you don't feel ashamed for your actions and constant rejection of Jesus Christ, you have a unrepentant heart because you have judged so many people and look at sins of others so much you think you can make it to heaven by your own self-righteousness. You will only continue to get harder and harder as time goes on. As it says in Proverbs 29.1, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. But back to Romans, Romans 2.4, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Look at what you have trampled over on your way to hell. You have jumped over the riches of his goodness, his forbearance, and his long suffering. God is good, and his goodness will lead you to repentance. If you aren't saved, then God will let you have a hard time to lead you to him. Believe it or not, when trouble comes your way, then that is the goodness of God. The forbearance of God is, you should be in hell, but you're still here. You're still alive, even though you should be dead. And God is long-suffering, and He is putting up with you longer than anyone else would. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now back at Romans 2 5, it says, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Notice the last verse and remember it. You will get what is coming to you, and God will get the last laugh. It says he will render to every man according to his deeds. Render means to pay back. And nothing is going unnoticed. The people who wrong you for no reason will get what is coming to them for their wicked deeds they're doing. He will render to every man according to his deeds. In Romans 2, 7, To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor, and immortality, eternal life. When a man who has never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ seeks for glory and honor and immortality, then God gets the gospel to him so that he can accept it. The one who deserves all the glory and honor is the Lord Jesus Christ, and only through him can you get immortality. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 says, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And this is referring to the rapture, where Jesus comes back for all born-again believers, and you get a new glorified body, and you put off incorruption, or you put on incorruption, and you put on immortality. And you can only get this through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Romans 2, 7 also refers to the Gentiles before the cross who went by their conscience and got mercy from God when they had continuance and well-doing. And this is said of Cornelius before he was saved in Acts 2, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He was seeking for glory and honor and immortality, and God sent Peter to give Cornelius the truth. So you see, when a Gentile seeks for glory, honor, immortality, God sends someone to give them the truth. And you see... That eternal life at the end of Romans 2 7. Eternal life is in Jesus Christ. 1 John 5 11, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. The beasts in Revelation 4 9 give glory and honor to the one who sits on the throne. So you can see all these things from Romans 2 7 relate to Jesus Christ. Glory, honor, immortality, eternal life. And if a man's seeking these things, then God will 
Send that man the truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But Romans 2 8 says, But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons with God. So we can also add that at the great white throne, you see there won't be any respect of persons. God isn't going to let someone buy just because of their personality. He isn't going to let someone buy just because of their celebrity status. Notice it says they get indignation, wrath, tribulation, and anguish. This is because if a man doesn't obey the truth and persistently obeys unrighteousness, then God will lead him to hell just like he led the other guy to salvation. If you want truth, then God will give you the truth. If you keep rejecting the truth, then he will make sure someone feeds you a bunch of lies and deceives you even more than you already are. Notice it says tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Nothing good is going to come from their wicked lifestyle. Romans 2.12 For as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Look at the first part of the verse. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. The ones who sinned without law would be the Gentiles under conscience. When the Gentiles sinned against their conscience, they were sinning against God. They went against the law written in their heart. So they perished. You see, your conscience can be seared, as it says in 1 Timothy 4.2, and it can also be defiled, as it says in Titus 1.15. Look at the second part of the verse, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. The ones who sinned in the law in verse 12 would be the people who had the law and knew it, and when they get to the white throne judgment, they will have to be as perfect as the one who never broke the law the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, this isn't referring to people in the church age, because look at verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. We aren't justified by keeping the law. We are justified by faith. So in the doctrinal sense, this isn't referring to someone in the church age. Because it says, but the doers of the law shall be justified. But look at Romans 3.26, which is directed toward people in the church age. To declare, I'd say at this time, he is righteousness that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. We aren't justified by our works, but under the Mosaic covenant, a man had to keep the law, and if he didn't, he would die and go to hell. If he broke the law, then he would offer the appropriate sacrifice and it would temporarily cover his sin, but he would never get his sins cleared like we got our sins cleared the moment we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Romans two fourteen and 15, For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. This is what I was saying earlier. A man who has never read the Bible or heard the gospel has the law written in his heart. And that is why in heathen countries where they don't have the gospel and there's not Bibles, they don't know about the Lord Jesus Christ, there are still penalties for, penalties for murder and stealing. And in Genesis chapter 20, Abimelech knew it was wrong to take Abraham's wife. So that shows he had it written in his heart. Notice it talks about their thoughts accusing one another. Or excusing one another. This is things like them telling themselves everyone else is doing it. A little bit won't hurt. You got to make a living. You got to get married and so on. Their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Romans 2.16 In the day when God shall judge 
the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Notice at the great white throne judgment, the secrets come out. These self-righteous people who judge others and like to appear righteous before men will have the skeletons come out of the, out of the closet at the great white throne judgment. And Mark 4.22, For there is nothing hid which shall not be made manifest, which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret that it should come abroad. And Psalms 90 and verse 8 says, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. You think WikiLeaks is bad? Imagine what will come out on Hillary at the Great White Throne Judgment. You hear all this stuff about Pizzagate and what goes on at Bohemian Grove and how these truther guys got in there and revealed some secrets about what these wicked men were doing. Imagine what God will reveal. God sees all and knows who is behind every wicked thing that is going on in the world. And all of these pedophiles who think they're getting away with sex perversion because their wife hasn't found out. They will have their secrets revealed by the creator of the universe. At the great white throne you will find out who really had the fake news. And who was really telling the truth. You will find out who was really behind the 9-11 attacks. You will find out is the earth really round or was NASA just lying and it's really flat. And all of these things that people argue about, one day it will be revealed who was right and who was wrong and who was lying and who was covering up sins and everything else. At the great white throne judgment, you will be judged by a righteous judge. You will be clothed in the filthy rags of your own self-righteousness and you won't have anything to stand on. You will literally be floating Standing there scared to death before a righteous judge. And Psalms 1.5 says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Imagine how terrifying it will be standing before the God of heaven and knowing he is about to throw you in the lake of fire.